Bears beats Battlestar Galactica Bingeworthy. Michael! Let me guess, every night you come home from a hard day's work and you turn on Netflix ready to watch something new and exciting. Then you end up watching The Office for the 400th time. Your Netflix subscription is turning into a $10 per month Office subscription. And hey, look, nothing is wrong with The Office, but there are just so many really funny shows out there that deserve some of your time, almost as much as Michael Scott deserves a Lifetime Achievement Dundee. This is Binge Worthy, and here are the comedies you should be watching on Netflix instead of The Office. Or at least in addition to The Office, once you finish rewatching it yet again. Where are the turtles? Big Mouth. So how do I explain Big Mouth? It's an incredibly crass cartoon that basically walks us through a bunch of middle schoolers going through puberty. And each character's, you know, changes are visually represented on screen by a large, furry, loud, hormone monster. Also very crass. The f did you just call me? Yeah, it is definitely kind of weird, but it might feature one of the most talented voice acting cast on television right now. You've got Nick Kroll, John Mulaney, Maya Rudolph, Jordan Peele, Jenny Slate, Fred Armisen, Jesse Klein. And because it's about puberty, there's plenty of super cringy, very awkward pieces of humor throughout the series, which should be welcome territory for anyone who loves and appreciates the self-deprecating comedy of The Office. This kid might be a genius. Dear white people, Writer-director Justin Simeon made waves at Sundance way back in 2014 with the film Dear White People. And then Netflix commissioned him to stretch it out, flush it out, and turn it into an incendiary comedy series for their streaming platform. Guys, you know what this is? This is racism. Yeah, I thought President Obama fixed all that. I know. Here's the basic setup. After a blackface party at the fictional Winchester University erupts an inevitable controversy and outrage, Dear White People veers its way through disparate reactions and responses including the perspectives of school leaders, a college newspaper reporter, and Sam, the host of the provocative Dear White People radio show. Does it have some serious overtones? Of course it does, but it peppers in some truly hilarious moments of levity, biting satire, and extremely relevant cultural commentary. Alec Baldwin was a genius. Aw, oh, hell. Shit's Creek. Comedy legend Eugene Levy, who might be best known to 90s kids as Jim's dad from American Pie. You see that? See what she's doing? She's kind of looking right into your eyes, saying, hey, big boy. Or Jerry Fleck from Best in Show. I've got two left feet. i got two left feet. <laughs> Teamed up with his son, Daniel Levy, to create Shit's Creek, a goofball Canadian comedy series that has unjustly flown under the radar for the past several years. The fifth season was just released, and now, finally, this modern cult classic is, well, just becoming a classic in its own right. Daniel Levy created the idea for Schitt's Creek after watching a whole lot of reality television and asking himself, what if all these super rich spoiled families suddenly lost all their money? Now that would make for great TV. In the show, Eugene Levy and the great Catherine O'Hara suddenly go belly up and have to move out to a town they bought as a joke and live out of a motel that's owned by the town mayor, Chris Elliott. Basically, if you like the character-driven plots and humor of The Office, you'll love Shit's Creek. You'll find these characters annoying, ridiculous, hilarious, and at the end of the day, at least a little bit endearing. He could potentially see himself considering saying I love you at some point sometime soon, so. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'm telling mom. The Good Place. This one is particularly apt for everyone out there who love The Office, but also Parks and Recreation. Hey there, is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. Michael Schur, who created Parks and Rec, was also a writer and producer on The Office. So there's some legitimately great comedy lineage here. In The Good Place, Eleanor, played by Kristen Bell, wakes up in The Good Place, a heaven-like afterlife, and is greeted by Ted Danson, playing a weirdly friendly guy named Michael. It's not very long before Eleanor realizes that this was all just a big mistake. Somebody royally forked up. Somebody forked up. Why can't I say fork? And the early episodes involve her trying to hide, well, most of the stuff she did when she was alive. There are a lot of twists and turns in the series, so we don't want to give too much away, but you can fully expect all of the full, blown out zaniness of The Office and Parks and Rec, but dialed up to 11 in this show. It features a lot more fantasy elements than Shure's previous works, but it manages to keep it all grounded with the same razor sharp wit you should be accustomed to. Her memory's still being rebooted because, oh, you know, someone murdered her. Lady Dynamite. Okay, so maybe the most underrated show on this list, Lady Dynamite is, well, it's really freaking weird, but I mean that in the best possible way. Yes! <laughs> and come on, didn't you think some Office episodes were really freaking out there? Sort of an oaky afterbirth. This is a Netflix original that could maybe only live on Netflix. 
It's an absurdist, semi-autobiographical account of Maria Bamford's struggle with mental illness that casually leaps across time, space, and various identities to deliver something that, well, really is almost unlike anything else on television right now. It's fun, it's wild, it's uncompromising, and it was canceled after two seasons. But if you want to watch something that's truly bonkers, Lady Dynamite should be top on your streaming queue. I am just uh, wobbly and hot like a flan. Cheers. Cheers is obviously not a deep cut. It just happens to be one of the most popular and celebrated sitcoms of all time, like The Office. But I do feel personally that it doesn't get the attention it deserves on Netflix. If you don't know, Cheers tells the story of a neighborhood bar in Boston named Cheers. Duh. What is a brewed alcoholic beverage consisting of barley and yeast? Well, I don't know, I usually just have a beer. Ted Danson, who makes his second appearance on this list, plays an ex-big league pitcher who runs and owns Cheers. And he always seems to get into hijinks with his staff and the gang of regulars who are always around and who almost definitely spend a problematic amount of time inside of a bar. Just being honest. Keep your eyes peeled for a young Fraser Crane because if you didn't know, Fraser is indeed a spinoff of Cheers. Yeah, right now. Alcoholism and radio psychiatrists aside, there are 11 seasons worth of episodes here and the writing on Cheers is superb. It pretty much created the mold of what the modern sitcom should be. You were kind of like pen pals. <laughs> you, you exchanged letters? No, cans. <laughs> Ah, who am I kidding? You guys are just gonna go watch The Office again anyway, aren't you? I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. That's what she said. See you, baby, acting cool, like you don't hey, I'm Alex Robinson, and that was Binge Worthy. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more from Thrillist Entertainment, check out the link in our description. And for another episode of Binge Worthy right now, click the link directly to my left.